hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making some Halloween pumpkin lanterns. Well, my favorite time of the year is just around the corner and now is the time that you want to start making things for that season. And that season would be Halloween. So I thought it would be fun to make some square lanterns to decorate around the house uh, with some jack-o'-lantern faces on them. It all starts off with easily accessible material. In this case, just some three quarter inch thick pine from the big box stores. Well, for this project, I want to make five lanterns and I have here five pieces of three quarter inch thick pine. They are six inches by six inches uh, in dimension. Now, what I've done is I've gone on the internet and I have picked out some pictures of pumpkins or pumpkin carving patterns, the ones that I like the most. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut these patterns out. We're going to adhere them to the front faces of our pieces of pine, and I'm gonna take them over to the scroll saw and cut them out. And for each one of your lanterns now, you are going to need two pieces that are six inches long and four and a half inches wide. Um, I have five lanterns, so I'm gonna need 10 pieces like that, and that will end up being the sides of our lanterns. Now, truth be told, guys, I cut these to four inches wide, not four and a half. I really wanted a six by six square for these lanterns, but unfortunately, uh, four inches wide worked better with the stock to provide the least amount of waste. So it was better to go with four inches here for these. Not a big deal. So instead of a six inch cube, I have a box that's six inches wide by five and a half deep, and that's just fine with me. So at this point now, it's time for some assembly. So what we're gonna do is take two of our four inch wide pieces, we're going to glue it, and I'm probably gonna use some brad nails here, I think, to help me in the assembly. And I'm gonna shoot a couple brad nails here, and we're going to glue a backing on it, just like this. And once we get that glued up like that, we're gonna clamp it together and sit it aside and let it dry overnight. Well, our boxes are dried up. It's actually the next day and I have cut some pieces for the tops and the bottoms. And these are all three quarter inch thick pine and they measure six inches by six and a half, which will yield a quarter inch overhang all the way around from our pieces. Um, but the first thing we want to do is I want to place a rabbit all the way around a quarter inch deep and one inch wide all the way around our pieces. And we're gonna do that over at the router table using a 5 16 upcut spiral bit. Um, and that will cut these very cleanly. So once I get those done, I'll show you what to do with this next. Well, at this point, we're going to give all of our pieces a good sanding. Guys, these single pin nail holes here, if you want to fill those in, place just a little tiny bit of wood glue in each hole and then sand your project while that glue is still wet. It combines with the glue, the sawdust, makes instant wood filler. I wouldn't do it on fine woodworking projects, but for Halloween lanterns, it's just fine. Fill those holes in just like that. So give all your pieces a good sanding. Uh, and then once we get that done, we're going to put a 1 8 inch round over on each one of our pieces here um, for the top and bottom. And then we can do the final assembly. Well, this next bit is optional. I have some scrap pieces of plexi here. Um, I have five of them for my five lanterns. I've cut them to a dimension of four and a quarter by five, and I have sanded on both sides with 60 grit sandpaper, and they will be placed and glued on the inside of our cutouts just to help diffuse the light. Now, you don't have to do that, but that is what I'm going to do. So at this point, we're going to carry on with the assembly. 
So as it turns out, we have a surprise visitor here in the shop today who is going to help us uh, assemble the base of these. So guys, what you're going to want to do is take one of your base pieces and we're going to apply a little bit of glue just around the perimeter where we placed our rabbit. So you're going to help me put some glue here? Yeah. yeah you going to help me? Mm -hmm. you going to help me with your elbow? Mm -hmm. That's strange. Grandma. You're not in the mood to help today? I'm behind. You keep helping. Grandma, look. Okay, I'll come look. Alright, so once you get that done, guys, we can place one of these boards on the bottom and then we'll clamp this in place and let it dry up. We'll do this for all of our lanterns. The top parts do not get glued in. They will just sit in place. And of course, don't forget, if you're going to include your frosted plexiglass, glue that in as well. Well, my visitor left. <laughs> she wasn't too enthusiastic to help, but that's okay. Another time. Now, guys, I want to add something to these. Uh, they, they're not very spooky the way they are. Um, I see a lot of people that make these. They paint them black and orange. I don't really want to do that. What I want to do is add some burning on them. Uh, to give them a different look all together. So just be careful with the torch. Um, be careful you don't ruin your cutting designs. And we're just going to pass this over and darken these things and give them that burned look. Now the great thing about pine is how it really shows off the grain when you do this and the charring around the outside of the cutting looks absolutely great. So I'm going to get all of these done. We don't need a video of it and uh, I'll see you at the end. Well the last thing that you're going to need is a source to light them and for me I have these rechargeable puck lights. Now guys you can use uh, battery operated tea lights, whatever you like. I like these because I can get different colors. So we'll just turn this off, or on rather, uh, put it inside of our pumpkin lantern, and then we add a lid. Guys, it doesn't get much cooler than that. Now, uh, truth be told, I held in those pieces of plexiglass with a little bit of silicone, a bead across the top, a bead across the bottom, squished it up against the inside of the pine, and there you go. Um, you want to be careful, guys, when you're burning these, as some of them can ignite um, with the smaller pieces. But either way, there you go. Some really cool Halloween lanterns. And there you have it. Halloween pumpkin lanterns. Guys, these are just a fun project. They're inexpensive to make, made out of crappy old big box store pine. Um, there is nothing really fancy about these. There's not even any fancy joinery. It's butt joints with a couple of inch and a quarter pin nails shot into it and some glue. Um, the whole project is just a great way to spend the afternoon. Now, I will tell you, if you're going to do that blowtorch method to blacken the sides and make the grain come out and make them a little spookier, that's cool and everything, but be very careful because those cutouts can and will ignite. Uh, a couple of them I had ignite like that and I had to blow them out really quickly. Now I do have a fire extinguisher right beside my bench. Um, so it's easy for me to grab that and blast it should something really get out of control. But that is something you want to keep in mind anytime you're going to be using any kind of fire in the shop. Have a fire extinguisher handy or a source of water. Anything that you can extinguish that fire, a fire blanket, anything like that, um, will help you should one of these things ignite. Remember, it is pine. Um, now, with that being said, 
that burning is completely optional. If you don't want to do it, by all means, don't do it. This is your project. Now, I was going to put some kind of knob on top or maybe a little pumpkin stem on the top there to be able to lift those lids off, but it doesn't suit my needs because I need to store these at some point in time and I want them to be able to be neatly stacked in a box. I don't want these stems making it so that they cannot be stacked, cannot be you know placed on top of each other. So the stems kind of got out the window. So as well, that plexi, now that is something that is completely optional as well. It is 100% up to you whether or not you want to use that. Now I use silicone to hold it in place, but you could easily use CA glue, you could use 5-minute epoxy, you could use something like a craft adhesive like E6000. Guys, there are plenty of adhesives you can use to get that uh, plexi to stay in place there, but sanding it with the 60 grit really frosts up the two sides and really diffuses any kind of light that is coming from the inside and gives it that nice soft glow and I really love the way they turned out. Now, I made these. The number five didn't come out of the air. I have five steps that come up to uh, my front doorway at my house, and I want to mount one on each step as the trick-or-treaters come up so they have these glowing lanterns there. So you can make as many as you want, and it's as simple as following the steps I gave you today. Now, it was nice to have a little visitor there to help me for just a little bit. She didn't pop by for long, but she wanted to be part of the show until the camera started rolling. And then she wasn't really that interested in doing anything except being silly. But that's okay. Sometimes that's what they do, and there's nothing wrong with that. Either way, guys, this is a great project, a load of fun. It comes together really quickly, and the end result is Fantastic. You really got to give this one a try if you're a fan of Halloween. And guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. This one's been a lot of fun, guys. I want to thank you again for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you're going to try this one for yourself because it is a load of fun. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. <laughs>